people of the internet. Now let this play. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Its mission, to explore strange new worlds. To discover new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Okay, and this is Star Trek Judgment Rides. And pretty much the sequel to 25th Anniversary. No, no plot con story now and continuation as is as usual for the series. Now I did 25th anniversary back when the previous movie came out and uh, well I'm not going to do this entirely. Just load a previously saved game. Just um I'll let me I'll just talk this to the end. Uh, just well, my problem with this game is mainly that the that the plots are rely too heavily on. <coughs> Ooh, we must deal with this supercomputer, superpowered alien, or this dangerous space anomaly. And also, I'll say a few words about the new movie. And well, about the new movies in general. One, if. Why are you going to go through the trouble to spend an entire first film establishing a separate continuity if you are just going to be rehashing the same things? Now old plots, old villains and such. And secondly, I'm getting tired of Abrams and company now taking the most obvious character traits from these characters and just amping it up to 11. Oh, Kirk had a reputation of making out with hot alien chicks. In the first movie, let's have him actually make out with a green alien chick. Second movie, he, he's in bed with two cat girls at the same time. Twin cat girls. Ooh. Yeah, okay. To the actual good writing to calm myself down. How long until we reach Nova Atar, Ensign? About 23 hours, Captain. Oh, there's another example of. Well. But the TV talks, talks called, called Splendorization. In the new movies, Chekhov, the youngest person on the bridge crew. So, in the new movies, he's even younger. I think he was 17 in the first movie. <coughs> and how is it, how this, is this possible? Why, he's a genius child prodigy, of course. And his accent is even more ridiculous. 22 hours, 53 minutes, and 17 seconds, to be precise. Spock, there's no need to be precise. We're going on shore leave. Rest, relaxation, no calls from Starfleet. Right. Captain, we have a message coming in from Admiral Richards at Starfleet. No, <laughs> I can't like how exasperated you fool or something. Captain, we have a message. Um... On screen, Lieutenant. Hello, Jim. I know you're going on shore leave, but... What is it, Chris? Oh, so we're on a first name basis. Since you're going there anyway, and it's only a small favor... Favor? I don't want to inconvenience you, but... Come on, out with it. Fine, you have it. What would you like me to do? We recently discovered that one of the exhibits in the Smithsonian Annex at Nova Attar is of great historical significance to the Serenzi, an influential family from planet Lockean. The museum is going to have a small ceremony to return the item. The Federation plan to send a representative, but, well, she couldn't make it. 
Since you'll be in the neighborhood, well, no dress uniforms. All you have to do is smile and shake hands. So, in the future, the Smithsonian Institute has expanded to be interstellar. Good for them. Smile, shake hands. It will be my pleasure, Admiral. My chief engineer had already promised to show me around. We'll be there. Thanks, Jim. I owe you one. Check your data files for details. Oh, one more thing, Jim. Due to the security concerns, you won't be allowed to bring any electronic equipment with you. Richard's out. Not even tricorders or communicators. <laughs> How will I ever survive? Now, I was saying. Do we really have to stand around and listen to speeches from a bunch of politicians? It won't be all bad, Scotty. The curator's a major cognac producer, and he asked us to show up early to thank us for our support. Captain, it'd be rude to keep a man like the curator waiting. What with an important diplomatic function to prepare for? Right. Hi ho, let's go. I believe it is Tista here. They've upgraded some of the cinematics. We've arrived at Nova Attar, yet. Since 25th anniversary. Bring us into standard orbit, Mr. Sue. Aye, Captain. Aye, aye. Hmm? Oh. Um, uh... We are at Nova Attar. Thanks, Spock. Ooh. Nova Attar, a Federation system whose third planet, Nova Attar 3, is the home of the Smithsonian Annex for this sector of the galaxy. Nova Attar is renowned for its rich collection of artifacts. By the way, in this game, Machel Barrett is the voice of the computer. And the um, non-speech version has quite a lot of information about stuff from the series. But, uh, well, let's saw here because, well, they had to make room. They couldn't spend all that space on the voices. I mean, want to know what they, whatever the Federation is doing with the Guardian of Forever? Well, well, you could watch the animated episode, animated series episode yesteryear, but, well, computer also has some mention of that there. Let's see. Smithsonian Annex. Location, Nova Attar. A large museum annex with exhibits ranging from some of the earliest technology in the galaxy to the most recent declassified recoveries of salvaged Klingon wreckage. The museum administration bans equipment from being brought into the museum. A force field also protects the museum from an intruding transporter beam. I guess it's a logical continuation of the no flash photography thing in museums these days. Um. Curator Bresnia bids you to beam down at your pleasure. Ooh. Mr. Scott, Mr. Chekhov, come with me, Mr. Spock, you have the call. Hmm. Transport Operation Sky. Transport Operation. Captain Kirk. Yeah. Good to meet you. I am Boris Bresnia, curator of the museum. Everyone is buzzing about visitors from the Enterprise. A real feather in my cap. Okay, I was wondering why we brought Chekhov along. I'm guessing now I know the answer. Um, the pleasure is ours, sir. <laughs> this is my chief engineer, Mr. Scott, and Ensign Chekhov, our navigator. Most pleased to meet you both. Chekhov. Fine name. I'm certain you will be interested in sampling the Kazakhstanian cognac, distilled and blended by my family. In fact, I will later show you my most prized possession, a bottle of our finest vintage, aged 40 years from our very first pressing. But isn't cognac French? Of course not. At least if you ask these guys. Originally, Mr. Scott. But before my ancestors came to settle this planet, they went to Cognac and purchased cuttings, brought them here, and made enhancements. You could say we reinvented Cognac. Hmm. I do not wish to be rude, 
but you gentlemen are a bit early, and I must see to making certain the cleaning crews are finished working. Please, feel free to look about a bit. I will page you later, and maybe you will join me in a small toast before the ceremonies. Yes? Yeah. It would be our pleasure, curator. I told you we invented it. Maybe we were a little hard on you, laddie. <laughs> Never doubted you for a second, Mr. Chekhov. Now let's take advantage of this time and look around. <clears throat> I imagine this is how you decorate your home, Mr. Scott. Aye, Captain. But I'd leave all the parts in. Most of this has been gutted. <clears throat> Maybe they'll display a piece of the Enterprise here someday, Captain. Maybe they will, Mr. Chekhov. They'd better not. Taking a piece out of that grand lady would be like cutting a head from the statue of the Antares Maiden and putting that on display. Mm. Interesting analogy, Mr. Scott. But you have to admit that someday even the Enterprise will be put into dry dock. Mm. Excuse me for a bit. Okay, hopefully that will be improve the frame rate a bit. He will not. I think we'll agree with Mr. Scott on this one, don't you think, Mr. Checker? Mm. Oh, well. Yes, Captain. You know, this is a fine place, Captain. We'll have to come here for shore leave more often. Kirk seems to be enjoying the leisurely stroll around the museum. Scotty thinks this is the best shore leave he's ever had. Chekhov is pleased to finally be with someone from his ancestral culture. Awesome. Everyone is having a good time. The plaque reads, an old ground-based phaser cannon model B-17, the real equalizer, rescued from a Federation scrapyard, probably based on the frontier near Nelapur. This phaser cannon no longer possesses any of its focusing or targeting equipment. The large capacitors in the base allowed a variety of power sources to be used to energize the cannon and gave the real equalizer considerable flexibility in use. Hmm. Oh, I? Huh, I don't even have an inventory icon. Lights cascade continually above the surface of this device. Plaques on each side read. The Vandicourt Aurora Generator was donated to this museum by Sir William Loudon. Originally, a university experiment designed to test broadcast power as both a containment system and photostimulation for possible use in a propulsion system, the unit was presented as a gift to Loudon, who liked the way it looked and had recently donated a significant sum to the university. Hmm. Wait. Donated a significant sum, but the Federation does not use money. Well, maybe that was before those times. The plaque reads, The Niven, non-integrated Vulcan electronumerator, was one of the earliest versions of a Vulcan computer. Some of the components were found to only function correctly at high temperatures. Since the focus in those early days was on computational effectiveness and not user-friendliness, the operator could not stand near the Niven during its operation. Input to the machine was cabled in from a separate device. Hence, it was a non-integrated computer. I'm sure the resemblance to the name of Larry Niven is a pure coincidence. The Klingon console looks operational, but without a ship attached, it's hard to tell. Written on the plaque, this is a control console from a Klingon warbird, the Clark, which was salvaged from the battle wreckage near Crimmins 8. Think you could make that work, Mr. Scott? Of course, Captain. But it's not like I'll ever have to. Hmm. Okay, does this... Huh, doesn't say what is in these directions. Oh well. There we go. Kirk realizes this is probably heaven to Scotty, but this isn't his favorite type of history. Chekhov thinks this is interesting, but that he's too young to be spending his shore leave in a stuffy old museum. Oh, nonsense. Scotty is quite pleased that the captain enjoys this as much as he does. 
There are some impressive items in this museum. Aye, they went to a lot of trouble to find some of these beauties. I hope the ceremony doesn't last too long. I'm starting to get hungry. I'm sure it won't be much longer, Mr. Chekhov. Not that I'm ever planning to leave the Enterprise, but a man could do worse than spend his retirement here. A lot worse. Hmm, maybe they could use someone like Scotty who has an understanding and appreciation of technology, modern and old. I don't know, Scotty. I don't think I can really imagine you wanting to spend your days tinkering with antiques. I can. Perhaps you're right, but uh, these things do have their charm. The plaque on the old machine reads, An early experimental transporter. The Murnain 8 was from a time before transporters were safe for travel by living beings. Constructed to be a frequently modified test bed, the Murnain 8 had only a small loading bay. The destination controls were also still in testing, making the use of this transporter as much art as science. Hmm, must have been before the time of the Enterprise series that they had to Ships freaking linguist using the transporting the transporter. This EVA suit was worn by Ivan Petrovsky, a late 21st century Terran astronaut, during the famous Commonwealth mission. Petrovsky used this suit to dock with the damaged spacecraft SS Commonwealth and save the vessel from certain destruction in orbit around Mars. Petrovsky, isn't that a Russian name? You should know better than me. I don't think so, Mr. Chekhov. Huh? I sincerely doubt it, laddie. Really? I would have sworn it was Russian. I would think so as well. And... The plaque on the okay. old... Just checking... An old communications panel. On the plaque. This communication station was removed off the old freighter, Big Bear Running, when that ship was retired from its customary Benchley to Sawcar run. Outdated by today's standards, this system was known for its powerful transmitter and ease of repair. As a side note, the shell of the Big Bear Running was used as a testing target for present models of photon torpedoes. Mm. The plaque reads... One of the most widely used and most stable designs ever. The Umber Hubble Mark 84 has been used in far more ships than any other model. Um. Hello? Okay, I guess. Left out the second last half for some reason. Ooh. Captain Kirk, I trained on one of these. It's solid as a rock and twice as dependable. Remind me after the ceremony. I'll talk to the curator about letting you look this one over. Thank you, Captain. I'd dearly love to put it through its paces. <sighs> Living history. Well, but I guess next time we'll continue looking through this museum and maybe run into something... Some problems we actually need to solve, but... Until then, I'm just happy to examine all these exhibits.